Hello viewers, in the research there are the situation where your population is unknown and infinite. Now suppose that if your population is unknown and infinite, so what to do? Here in this video we are going to find out the solution of such a situation. If your population is infinite and unknown, then you can determine the sample size with the help of, with the help of the Cochrane's formula. Now in this video we are going to understand Cochrane's formula with the help of some numerical example. Definitely this video will be useful to identify, to determine the sample size for your PhD thesis, to determine the sample size for your summer internship project or the dissertation. Now look at the formula. What is the Cochrane's formula? n is equal to z square in bracket p into q divided by e square. In some of the book, instead of e square, author use m square. Now we will discuss this formula in detail. Here in this formula n is equal to sample size, z is equal to z table value, p is equal to variability, q is equal to 1 minus p and here e is equal to sample error or in many books we call it margin error. I know that there are many questions. What is the z? How to find out the value of z? What is the p? What is q? And what is e square or what is m square in some book? Now I will explain in the brief exactly what is the e square means what is the sample error or margin error, how it is connected with the confidence level, how to find out the value of z, how to find out the value of p and the meaning of each term. I will explain this all the things with the help of some small small example. Now look at the first point that is margin of error which is denoted in e square which is denoted by e and in some of the book it is, it is denoted by m. Now what is the margin error? Basically, margin error is the percentage that show how close the sample result will be with respect to the true value. Margin error is nothing but the amount of the error that can be allowed in your study. Now, let us take example. Suppose if I have conducted the survey about customer satisfaction level and after my research, suppose if I concluded for customer satisfaction is 50% with the margin error of plus minus 3%. Margin error is always in the form of plus minus. Now here plus minus 3% means that much of margin error allowed while calculating the customer satisfaction. Means my customer satisfaction will be in the range of 53% to 47%. Means I have added 3% to the 50% and I have minus 3% to the 50%. Therefore that my result will be between 53% to 47%. Now look at the slide. On the slide I have written one example. If the researcher finds 70% of the student in the sample have adopted a recommended practice of submitting the assignment with the precision rate. Now here precision rate means margin error or you can call it a sample error. Precision rate is plus minus 5%. Now here plus minus 5% means we can conclude that that acceptance about the submitting assignment will be between 65% to 75%. Now why 65% to 75%? Because we have added the margin value and we have subtracted the margin value. Therefore it is between 65% to 75%. Now second term is the confidence level. Now remember one term your confidence level is always closely related to the margin error. The value is used to measure the degree of certain about how well a sample actually presented the entire population within the margin error. Now let us understand if you have selected confidence level as a 95%, it means you can be a 95% certain that the result will accurately fall within the margin error which you have chosen. Uh, generally in the sample size calculation or generally in any, res any research, we consider the confidence level as a 95%. Once you know the confidence level then easily you can calculate the z score which is useful in your formula. Now look at the table. If the confidence level is 95% then obviously your z score is 1.96. If the confidence level is 99% then your z score is 2.58. Now here is the example how your margin error and confidence level are associated with each other. Now understand the example if the company x conduct a survey on customers and finds that 50 percent of the respondents say its customer service is very good the confidence level is cited as 95 percent and therefore marginal error is three percent if the survey were conducted 100 times the percentage who say service is very good will range between the 47 and 53 percent already we have discussed the two example on the basis of this now the third term is the variability now what is the variability 
variability is nothing but the distribution of attribute in the population now here i would like to explain the two terms basically suppose if your population is the homogeneous then there is a less variability and in that case you can choose the small sample size also if your population is heterogeneous then there is a large variability at that time you have to consider the large sample size here i would like to mention a very one very important point suppose in the example variability is not mentioned at that time you have to consider the maximum variability means 50 percent variability therefore at that time your p value is equal to 0 0.5 now we have understand what is the confidence level we have understand what is a uh, margin error we have understand about the uh, variability now we will use all this term and we will solve the example now look at the example about the Cochrane's formula now there are some values are given variability p is equal to 0 0.5 confidence level is 95 percent and sample error error and the sample error means margin error is 5 percent already we have discussed the formula n is equal to z square into p into q divided by e square now here e is nothing but the uh, your sample error or margin error that is 5 percent means it is a 0 0.05 z is equal to now how to find out the value of z z value is related with the confidence level now look at this table when the confidence level is 95 percent at that time z value is 1.96 therefore here in this example we have considered the z value is equal to 1.96 p means it is a variability here p's value is equal to 0 0.5 and q is equal to 1 minus p therefore q value is equal to 0 0.5 now we have put all the values in the formula therefore n is equal to therefore n is equal to in bracket 1.96 square into 0 0.5 into 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.0, .0 square suppose if you have suppose if we have done the uh, analysis if we have done the calculations then we will get the value n is equal to 384 therefore our sample size is 384 now look at the second example in this example basically uh, variability is not given therefore here we will consider the variability p is equal to 50 percent therefore p is equal to 0 0.05 obviously obviously p is equal to 0 0.05 means q is equal to 1 minus p that is 0 0.5 here again confidence level is 95 percent and according to our z table your z value is equal to 1.96 again we have put all the value in the table here your answer is equal to 385 385 student now this answer is on the basis of the unknown population when you don't know the population or your population is at very large set your population is infinite here we are going to understand the second part of the example now here we are going to use one formula that is n is equal to n0 divided by 1 plus in bracket n0 minus 1 divided by capital n now here what is the condition he already they have recommended some population right therefore initially we have calculated some sample that sample is nothing but the n0 initially we have calculated the sample size is 385 therefore here n0 is equal to 385 capital n is equal to population already in the example they have given us a population 5000 now we will put all these values into the formula therefore your n is equal to 385 divided by 1 plus in bracket 385 minus 1 divided by 5000 therefore your n is equal to 358 again here i would like to discuss a uh, one example about the cochrane's formula here in some books they have given a such a type of the formula s is equal to z square into p into 1 minus p divided by m square if you compare this formula with our previous formula the formula is one and same only instead of q here directly they have written 1 minus p and instead of e square they have used the sign m square Therefore, here S is equal to sample size, Z is equal to Z square, P is equal to, it is a, a variability or population proportion and M is equal to margin error. Now, here we are going to add one more step. We are going to calculate the adjusted sample size. Now, adjusted sample size is equal to S divided by 1 plus S minus 1 divided by total population. In the previous example, instead of S, we, are, we have used the one uh, alphabet that is N0. N0 was our initial sample and z score is determined on the basis of confidence level that we have already discussed now in the second example they have given us a confidence level that is 95 percent margin error is 5 percent and z value is equal to 1.960 therefore here we are going to calculate the sample size with the help of this value initially we don't know the population we are going to use this 
वन लैक पॉपुलेशन एट द टाइम ऑफ दी एक्जिस्टेड एट द टाइम ऑफ दी एक्जिस्टेड सैंपल साइज देर फोर नाउ वी हैव पुट ऑल दिस वैल्यू इन टू इन टू दिस फॉर्मूला नाउ द सैंपल साइज इज इक्वल टू थ्री एट्टी फोर पॉइंट सिक्सटीन नाउ फॉर फाइंडिंग आउट दी एक्जिस्टेड सैंपल साइज हियर वी आर गोइंग टू यूज द पॉपुलेशन दैट इज कैपिटल एन एंड द कैपिटल एन इज इक्वल टू वन लैक now existed sample is equal to s means our initial sample divided by 1 plus s minus 1 means initial sample minus 1 divided by population initial sample was 384.16 therefore we put all the values in this existed sample size and the answer is 382.69 means approximately 383 uh, samples basically again i would like to conclude this uh, video with the one note this cochrane formula is useful when your population is unknown and infinite in all the example in the first stage the populations are unknown and at the second stage we have calculated the existed sample with the help of the given or considered population